Hey paddlers, I'm Q inside Stand On Liquid. I am going to be talking about board selection. If you've been scouring the internet and trying to figure out what board is right for you, hopefully this helps you drill down and gear, you know, whittle that down to a couple three boards that are going to work for you and how you want to get on the water. One big thing is inflatable versus rigid. Those are two drastically different things and that's a different topic that we'll cover in a different video. Um, but if you are limited on storage and transport, the inflatables are a fantastic way to go. Everything else I talk about through the balance of this video is going to correspond to both rigid and inflatable. So first I'll start off with the shape of the board. So you've got a rounded nose shape board and you have a V nose shape board. So the all around or the rounded nose boards are going to offer greater stability. They do offer the ability to be surfed in the ocean or in the rivers. And you can basically paddle those boards anywhere you want. If it floats, you can paddle there. The all around boards are with that rounded nose. It's got more of a beam or a width that's carried more throughout that board. So inherently it's going to offer greater stability. One potential downfall with that is each board has some rocker and that's where that nose turns up. So you're going to have a flat face going through the water, which may cause a little bit of a surge and lull with each paddle stroke. They're also going to be easier to turn because of that rocker and allowing it to wash and you to redirect the board where you need to go. If you're looking for a board that's more efficient on the water, you're going to sacrifice some stability, but going to a touring board or a board with a V-shaped nose, that board's going to have more of a piercing attribute. So as you're paddling upstream or through chop, that's going to slice and dice right through. It's going to allow you to maintain a good, efficient or a good, consistent paddling speed versus an all around where you may get that surge and lull. The other thing with a touring board is they typically track better. So they're going to hold a line and in turn, that's going to increase your cadence. You're going to get more paddles in on each stroke. Now boards, that shape, board size, where do we go from here? The kind of big idea here is the longer a board is, the straighter it's going to want to go and the more distance it's going to travel with each paddle stroke. So if you're looking for a board that's going to hold a line, get eight to 10, 12 paddles in on a, on a side, a 12 and a half foot to 14 foot touring board would be a really good option for you. If you want a board that's a little bit more nimble and easy to turn, that's where an all around will come into play or a shorter board, I should say. So that's the length. If you're in stability wise, you're going to have varying widths out on the market. And so the wider a board is a board, if it's 36 inches wide is going to be extremely stable. You could fish off from it. You can do yoga. You can have a kid on there, a dog, multiple people, if you will, or gear. If you, as you go narrower, you're going to sacrifice some stability, but you're going to turn that, that efficiency portion up in that. So that's width and the combo of length and width will combine to create volume, which basically is what that board will float. And so what you want to do is you want to look at who the largest paddler is or what the largest payload that's going to be on that board, dog, kid, camping gear, what have you, you want that board to be able to float that. You can always put a smaller paddler on a bigger board and they're fine. If you put a big paddler or a big payload on a small board, it sinks it, it becomes unstable and really slow through the water. That's length and width and volume and trying to figure out what it's going to float. You're also going to run into fin configurations. So you're on a lot of the touring boards, the pointy nose boards, you're just going to have a single center fin. And that's really all you need. That's going to help you maintain direction as well as offer stability. In the all around boards, you're going to have uh, up three, maybe even five fin, fin boxes in that board. So you can vary it. If you're going to surf, you can put in your surf setup. If you're going to flat water, you can paddle with your flat water setup. The side bites, if you're paddling flat water, they don't have a whole lot of effect on the board, but hydrodynamically, they will help that board track better for you, as well as offer some greater stability. So you've got all arounds and you have two rings and you have what you want to do. So take all of those things, put them together and figure out what might be the right board for you when you hit the water. If you have any questions, feel free to stop by the shop or give us a call. We're here to help. Thanks for joining.